All right, here we are at a beautiful December morning at Chestnut Hill Tree Farm and Real Tree Nursery. This is the chestnut orchard in the background here that's already lost its leaves for the winter time. And we're going to plant some chestnut trees and show you all of the tools necessary to and the procedure to do the job. Just a brief overview of what we use. Uh, tape measure, of course, to tape out the rows. Um, we have rototilled the ground in advance, uh, the sod in advance of planting to, uh, to stop some of the weed competition. And we'll look at that more when we're planting the trees. Flags for marking the spots for the trees. Post hole diggers for planting the tree band sized trees, which take only a very small hole. The shovel, the real tool of destruction. And here we've got both a three gallon and a seven gallon chestnut tree. The tree bands here are one year trees and as you can see they're two to three feet tall. We'll look at them closer while we're planting. And then here is the three gallon two year chestnut. You see it's grown really nicely up about eight feet already. And then next to it is a seven gallon tree that has already branched out really nicely. And with, that's a three year tree and this seven gallon tree, of course it's larger caliper and it will be bearing next year. Okay, in sequence here, after we dig the holes and plant the trees, the next step that we will use is to put down ground cloth or a weed mat that helps control the weed growth around the base of the tree, which is really important. The mat is permeable, so it will allow water to, uh, to go through and continue to water the tree. We have stakes for staking down the corners of the mats. These are timed release fertilizer packs, clippers for trimming the tree. And then the next is of course the very important planter tree tubes with ventilation. And we'll go over the installation of these tubes. The tubes are held in place with simple flagging stakes available at your big box home retailer, a hammer to drive the stakes in the ground, and cable ties to secure the tube to the stake. Um, that's all there is. It's really pretty basic. So let's get started and we will start planting some trees. All right, here we are with Fritz Myers, and we're going to plant some of the tree band trees. We've already staked out a spot uh, that's 20 feet apart from the nearest tree. And he's using post hole diggers because the tree band chestnuts do not have very large roots. As you can see, we've got to bust our way down even after rototilling to get down into the ground. We've got pretty good soil here at our farm in Alashua, but it has got a lot of clay in it, which is good, a lot like Georgia or the Piedmont. And so you've got to work it down. And luckily the hole doesn't have to be very big for the tree band to be able to be perfect. So a little bit more and another couple of inches and we'll be ready to go. Not very much work to it to plant a tree band sized tree. And this is of course the size that we send UPS all over the nation. Okay, so this is the tree band chestnut and you can see the air pruning at the bottom of the pot has caused the roots to uh, multiply branch as it comes out of the air prune holes in the bottom of this pot. Uh, we use this pot for a reason because it creates a much better branch root system and the tree survives much better upon transplanting. So Fritz is going to pull this on out of the pot. Sometimes you got to squeeze it. Now you can see there's the root system and you can see, I'm going to move in closer here, so you can see all of the roots all the way around the perimeter of the pot where they've hit the edge and grown around. And what Fritz will do now is kind of break it up with his hands and just um, kind of open it up to allow these roots to start to, to come apart. So you can take it and do it this way. Um, 
squeeze it and kind of get your finger in there. And, but that just helps the root system now when the tree starts to grow into the ground, you've got the roots loosened up and they'll, they'll grow really easily into the, uh, into the soil around it. Remember, most of the root growth that occurs when you plant a tree occurs in the top foot or two of the soil. It goes all the way out to the tree line. So now you want to plant it at the same level that it was planted in in the nursery. So the top of the soil from the pot is the top of the soil of the ground. Uh, maybe down just a little bit so you've got kind of a basin to be able to collect water. Pretty easy. Now we'll come back and water it in really well. All right, so we're fortunate here because we're by our greenhouse that we've got water available in a hose. So what he's doing now is use it, putting the water around the base of the tree because you want to create air, you want to get rid of all the air pockets at the base of the tree. And the air pockets cause the roots not to continue to grow. Um, just like the air pruned pot does, but you want to get rid of those air pockets in the soil around the tree when you plant it. So you water it in real well, work the, work the uh, soil and the water down in around the area where you planted and let it sink down and then do it again. If you're doing this out in the woods, you want to at least have a, hopefully a five gallon bucket of water to be able to pour onto the tree as you plant. Um, so go ahead and hit it one more time there. And that washes all the soil in really nice down around the base of the roots. And you know what we forgot, but we'll go ahead and add at this point. It's fertilizer pack. All right, so we've got the tree planted and watered in. And as you can see, the, uh, the weed mat has a slit in the center to go right over the top of the tree. They think of everything. So this is pretty straightforward. Slide it right over the top, slides down. And then the staples poke in the ground and you can use a hammer to bang them down with. If you don't have strong hands like Fritz, it out nice and tight. Excellent. So here we've got a, a really nice weed protection area. Weeds compete heavily with the roots of a young tree getting established for uh, fertilizer and water and so this helps to be able to uh, to stop that competition and of course it's organic too so you're not using herbicide to do the same thing an important point is the young trees have chlorophyll actually in the bark of the tree and if you can see even here during the winter time there's some greenishness to the bark that's chlorophyll which is the uptake um, chemical that uh, is in the cells that promotes photosynthesis and roundup the most commonly used herbicide activ is activated by into chlorophyll and that's what kills the plant. And so you really want to keep Roundup off of even the trunk of a young tree. So that's why the weed mat helps so you don't have to spray chemicals right next to it. Okay, so now we're going to put on the grow tube and stake it down to hold it upright. So it's pretty easy single trunk tree grow tube slides right over the top and you just take the uh, stake and put it on the outside of the of the uh, the tube take the hammer and drive it down to the ground highly technical we're hitting a little hard ground there but that's probably enough to do it right there then you use the cable ties slide it through the hole in the tube and cinch it around the stake. And that's all there is to it. So one of the important things about the Plantra tree tubes is they have these little slits. That's very important 
and you want to make sure this is the kind you use and and the and the reason for these slits is that the tube has multiple functions first of all this is a five foot tube now that chestnut tree will probably grow out of the top of this tube in one year but the tube the five footers are tall enough to be able to protect it from a lot of browsing by deer it also stops rodents and rabbits from chewing on the trunk of the young tree and it also keeps the deer from rubbing their antlers on it in addition the tube acts as a mini greenhouse it is and it creates a nice environment and the color is specifically chosen for the tree to promote photosynthetic growth also at night the leaves of the tree as a process of photosynthesis breathe off water during respiration the tube collects that water as condensation and rewaters the tree so in a forest setting it really improves the growth of the tree by recycling the water from the tree back down to the roots again it's another reason why it grows much faster out of a tube finally the slits are important because it vents the tube and keeps it from getting too hot so especially in the north where the tree is growing strongly you want it to cool off and go dormant in the fall if it's too tender an early fall freeze can damage the young tree uh, if it hasn't hardened off and the slits allow the tree to harden off successfully after a couple of uh, light frosts in the fall All right, here we are back again at Chestnut Hill Tree Farm and Realtree Nursery. And we're gonna be planting a three gallon, two year old chestnut this time. We got our trusty Realtree Kubota cart. We're hauling stuff around. Fritz is digging here. Beautiful, rich, North Florida dirt, prettiest dirt in North Florida. Nice and brown, good little bit of clay in it. Much better than the sandy soil that uh, occurs in a lot of places. A lot more like the Piedmont of Georgia. And he's gonna dig a hole that is bigger than the three gallon pot, which you can see is sitting right there. And that'll break up the surrounding soil and give the roots something, some soft soil to work in. Now normally, it's not necessary, so just a tad deeper, what do you think? Just a little bit more, another couple inches, and uh, there we go. All right, so next, we will take the pot off the root, it slides right out. Container grown trees of course are much, much better for transplanting than bare root, much higher live rate. You can see the root growth already around the around the edges of the pot. This is perfect root growth for transplanting by just working the edge and breaking up the soil a little bit gets the roots to where that they can really go into the into the ground and that's basically all you have to do now we normally don't add additional mulch or anything to the hole however we will put a couple of fertilizer packs down in it and I'm gonna go grab them right now okay here we go now what we want to do is make sure that at the level that it's planted with the basin um, you can go ahead and put those, root, those fertilizer packs in. We're using two time-release fertilizer packs. The time-release goes over a period of uh, three to four months, feeds the tree slowly during the winter time. As long as the roots, as the ground is not frozen, the tree will root into the ground over the course of the winter and help it become established and come out much better in the springtime versus planting late in the spring when it gets hot right away, especially here in Florida. But fall planting or planting during the winter in the south when the ground isn't frozen, you can basically plant all year long. The fertilizer will feed the tree over the course of the winter and then have good, good fertility next spring when the tree leaves out next spring. And you can see where the, the tree has been planted here. 
where the pot, the soil, where it was in the pot, the crown of the tree, or the, the point at which it comes out of the ground, is right at the previous ground level. And so we'll make a little dam around the outside to help hold moisture, but first we'll water the tree in to get it well established. So what we're doing is creating a little, just kind of a dam around the outside, create a little watering basin for the tree so that the, it, when we do water it in, that the, the walls of the little dam, the basin, hold the moisture in around the base of the tree. Pretty straightforward. Not that, nothing that critical, but we're on a bit of a slope here, so it won't hurt to help the moisture when we put the water in to go right down around the roots. So now, grabbing the water, Just like before, we're going to press the hose in around the base of the tree. And of course, if you've got a uh, just a bucket and you're doing this out in the woods, uh, take your shovel handle or a stick and uh, press the water, uh, press around the outside edge to get those air pockets out and let the water get down around the roots so the soil uh, gets filled in nicely and there's no air pockets and we're letting the water settle in and we'll do this another couple of times here and then we'll be ready to uh, to put on the weed mat try one more time there pressing it in around the edge just gets that water down in there gets rid of all those air pockets really nicely All right. So the next step is to trim off, of course there was a stake that was used in the nursery growing process. There's an old wooden stake. Now that bamboo stake could work for your support for the, for the, uh, for the ground cloth. And we're pruning off any little limbs that may be around the base of the tree including this larger limb, it's okay to do that. That makes the trunk, those scars will heal, and this makes a nice straight trunk that will eventually be the major trunk of the tree. Now, we're, the tree grows by itself naturally the way it, it wants to grow. So we're gonna take it right now, and just we'll bend it over. And slide the ground cloth down around it. Staple it down. Very easy. And if you've got a bigger tree that the ground cloth won't go over, you can just make a slit in the ground cloth from one edge all the way to the center and slide it around. Just slide it on from the side. Nothing to it. go. The ground cloth is stapled down and now the tube goes on with the two holes on the bottom where the cable ties will hold the stake. The tree is flexible. Slide it right over the top, up into it, and right on down. And you can do this with a four-footer or a five-footer. So I'm going to hold it up right here while Fritz bangs the stake into the ground, and I'm going to have it perpendicular to the ground. Oop. Broken stake. That's okay. It's just structural. It's not probably work. And I will take the cable ties. Cinch it down. Nice and tight. That's really all there is to it. 
And once again, the grow tube protects the tree, helps it grow faster, recycles the water, and it also is a barrier for, not only for animals, but if you are spraying herbicide and you don't have the weed mat, the, the tree tube protects the young bark of the tree against any kind of weed uh, herbicide damage. So now you can see here that the tree is out of the top of the tree and your branches will form up at the top here and it will end up looking much like next year the seven gallon tree where you can see the branching is coming out up at the top of the tree and that's perfect for long-term growth of a beautiful orchard tree with a nice straight trunk below.